A strange mass of monsters is approaching the human race. And this cop had no idea. The next second, she dropped the phone in her hand, and her left foot began to melt away. She screamed at the top of her lungs. At that moment, two people downstairs hear the commotion. In the blink of an eye, the policewoman was completely melted to the ground. When the two men arrived at the room, they didn't find anything out of the ordinary, except for the cell phone on the floor. The policewoman seemed to have disappeared into thin air. Annie told the doctor about this phenomenon, but the doctor was puzzled and didn't know what it was. Just a day ago, an old man with white hair was calling for help. He said there was a mysterious creature in his house. Suddenly, the old man disappeared, leaving behind a shaking phone and images of the old man on the wall. What's even stranger is that people in the town are also disappearing more often. Amy is in charge of investigating this case. She came under a bridge. There were flowers and pictures of them missing. There were also a lot of human graffiti on the walls. They all had one thing in common. They couldn't see their faces. Ryan told Amy that it wasn't just someone drawing on the walls. It was just they're out of nowhere. To find out what happened, the two men went to the missing person's room. They found a diagram of the human nervous system on the wall. At that moment, the door to the room suddenly closes, and the lock turns two-dimensional. When they turned around, the sofa slowly melted into two dimensions like a bubble. Everything in the room began to disappear. The two of them hurriedly climbed into the hammock, but the two-dimensional monster tried to catch them along the wall. They shook the hammock vigorously and escaped at the last moment. They returned to the bottom of the bridge, and found the workers trying to clean up the graffiti. So they stopped them. Then a horrifying sight appeared. The graffiti on the wall suddenly came to life. The scene stunned Balthead. The people on the wall slowly turned around and began to reveal their faces. Then they slowly melted and seemed to come out of the wall. This horrific scene scared the crowd. They could only run away quickly. The monster accelerated its melting rate again and flowed down the wall to the ground. Chasing the direction of the crowd, they run into an abandoned warehouse. The doctor told Amy, these two-dimensional creatures can talk. We can try to communicate with them. The doctor uses a translator to send a voice over the radio. And sure enough, he gets a reply. 22. Amy's got a question mark on her face. What does that mean? It's Jake's job number. Just as the others were confused, Jake stood motionless. Amy changed her position and realized that he had turned into graffiti. That's horrible. And then he starts melting and coming after the group. They rush to hide in the tunnel. But all the switches here have become D. Then the doctor took out a cell phone from his pocket. He can convert to D to 3D. Amy pressed a button on the phone. A green light shot through the door lock, but before it could work, the machine started to emit white smoke. Before anyone could react, a giant hand reached out from behind and grabbed the bald guy. Not only that, strange creatures appeared on the ground. After the doctor upgraded the machine, Amy tried again with the machine, and this time it worked. Everyone rushed to open the iron door to enter another room to prevent the monsters from invading. Amy transformed the door into a two-dimensional one. You think that's safe? Not really. The monster released an energy ray and returned the door to its original state. Trouble is really coming. All the graffiti on the wall suddenly came to life, changed from 2D to 3D, and are chasing humans. Amy accidentally lost her teleporter while running away, seeing that the monsters are getting closer. Amy can only continue to run for her life, and the doctor's teleporter just fell on the train tracks. What's even more dangerous is that there's a train coming. The doctor is about to be crushed. So he reaches out with both hands to straighten the transmitter, and uses his fingers as his feet to crawl forward. Just as the train arrived, he climbed out of the track safely. The doctor was delighted with his cleverness, but what he didn't realize was that the conveyor was falling down again. When it was too late, the doctor activated the guards. Amy made it to the subway, then another train appeared. Amy used an electric pump to signal the driver to stop the train with a green light. With the monsters right in front of him, Ryan drives the train into them. Amy rushes to stop it. In the nick of time, Amy pulls Ryan and jumps off the train. When the smoke cleared, the train became two-dimensional. On the way back, Amy finds the flattened conveyor. The only way to restore it is to energize it from the outside. Amy had an idea. She took out a piece of paper. Watching the monsters slowly approach, Amy places the teleporter behind the iron gate. They did release the energy, trying to figure out how to turn two dimensions into three. What they don't realize is that this is Ryan's drawing on the paper. The energy goes through the wall and into the transmitter. As more energy is sucked in, it glows blue and flies into the air. It spins and crashes into the monsters. A flash of light instantly knocking them hundreds of meters away. The doctor comes out of it. They handed the energy gun to the doctor and then shot a wave of energy at the monsters. The monsters that were caught in the light were instantly destroyed. At the end of the story, the people who were devoured by the two-dimensional monster returned to normal life. End of movie. If in the future, 2D invades us, how should we face it? Please follow me. See you next time.